In the past three years, we've come a long way with viewability, um, starting with testing and development work and identifying the best partners to work with uh, and transferring that operational methodology into a trading standard. So I think where we've come is, is an amazing testament to the industry pulling together and helping our clients achieve what they want, which is having ads seen by real human beings. So what is the Group M standard and how is it set and kind of how might it be different uh, than what um, <coughs> publishers might be expecting? I mean, there is some degree of tension or dynamic between what is viewable in your eyes and what's viewable sure. in other partners. So tell us about that dynamic. Well, I think we were mm -hmm. reacting to the maturation of the digital industry. In the beginning, most of the clients that were investing in digital were performance-based clients that had closed-loop ROI models. Um, and as we started to expand digital into marketers looking to develop reach extension for audience lost in the offline world, specifically television, uh, we realized that we had to develop metrics that were more apples to apples with what clients were expecting from their linear investments. So the Group M 100% standard basically recognizes the fact that the dollars moving out of TV are dollars being spent in an environment where you would anticipate sound, you would anticipate the full screen being viewable. So we created a standard to equalize digital to that, to that linear standard. Cool. There's a lot of discussion here about outstream uh, sort of or in-text video. Uh, what are your thoughts about that in terms of um, uh, standards and what you find acceptable at Group M? Sure, at this point we don't have a separate standard for outstream. Uh, we think that user experience is what we're all trying to improve and some outstream environments just in general aren't very good user experiences. Others seem to be more appropriate. Um, we're always looking at benchmark data. We're always um, working closely with, with our research partners and with the IAB to make sure we understand what, what consumers want and, and we, we, we only investing in the platforms that we think can deliver the quality audience our clients need while not interrupting a user experience. Cool, and finally there's a lot of discussion about data providers, all kinds of sources. We speak to a number of people here at the conference in general. Uh, in terms of the data that you guys have for your decisioning, where does that stand and what do you look to your partners for in terms of uh, perhaps other data sets or other uh, usable kinds of data? Sure. I think our, our belief is that the data is relatively commoditized. At this point, every one of us has a profile that's measured by every third-party data company in the world. So the data that we use isn't necessarily different than the data anyone else uses, except for the onboarding of our clients' first-party data. The real valuable data differentiator is what our clients maintain in their own systems, their own CRM systems. Uh, so the difference in how we use data is a differentiator to how we can target and be more effective for our clients. And finally, Joe, I just want to ask in terms of what you're hearing here and in terms of some of the big topics uh, of concern uh, from your point of view that you've been hearing here that you would like to have solved perhaps or addressed or where you would hope the industry moves. Uh, I think we all uh, are very uh, encouraged by the progress of the Trustworthy Accountability Group. Um, we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, delivering a trustworthy supply chain for our clients. Um, so seeing it, it can be frustrating, the pace of development, uh, the pace of the flex and lean development process has been a little slower, I know, than, than the tech lab, you know, Alana would like at the tech lab. But you only get one shot to do it right. Um, so I think uh, having the patience to develop correctly is an important thing as we all sort of get, you know, an urgent feeling that we need everything now.